Hey everyone, 3D Coaster here, and today I'm excited to bring you these ball bearing wheel assemblies for the Connect Scream and Serpent train. These have uh, been in the works for a while with the help of some other people. Um, I'm excited to show you where they've come so far. So, I'm going to talk about some of the materials you're going to need to make them and then the tools you'll need to make them. So, stay tuned. So yeah, going over some of the tools you'll need to assemble these, uh, obviously you need a screwdriver. I will be using a pretty fine Phillips head screwdriver uh, to clean some of your prints. You're going to need a sort of knife. I use a utility knife to kind of clean up the prints a little bit. You're going to need a pair of pliers for the very end step when you put on some nuts onto the screws. And then this one right here, this is a tap number 440 for all you US folk out there with a, a handle. Um, I don't know how available these are in other countries that use the metric system so if you don't have these where you are you can also use an M3-0.53 thread tap. They're pretty much the same diameter. The thread counts a little bit different but US use number 440 uh, this will really help to make sure that your screws will go in straight and your prints, if you're using an FDM printer of some sort like I am, they won't split the prints. So definitely for sure use this. Alright, next we'll go over some of the materials you're going to need. Um, one of the big things for sure, um, the thing that is probably the most important here, is you're going to need ball bearings. These are M115 ball bearings, which are 5 by 11 by 4 millimeters. The 5 stands for the inside diameter, the 4 stands for the width of the diameter, and 11 is the total diameter across the bearing there. So those, you're going to need six of them, and I go into another video on how you're going to clean those. The next thing you're going to need are four of these beads here. These are fuse beads. These beads are perfect for this because they will go inside your bearings here like that and then the screw's gonna go in there. This bag right here, bought a big pack of a thousand. So that's what you're gonna wanna get, or a big bag from Walmart or something is what I originally got, so. The next thing you're gonna need are these screws here. You're gonna need four one inch screws. And if you're in the US, these screws, the thread is number 440. So four of those, an inch long, and then two three-quarter inch long ones, and then two half-inch ones. If you're not in the US and metric is more available, as mentioned, you're gonna get a 25 millimeter screw. Remember, these are M3-0.5 threads. So 25 millimeter, 18 millimeter, and 12 millimeter. Those will replace your half inch, three quarter inch, and inch screws. So same count there. And then you're also gonna need two of these nuts here for the final touch. And then obviously you're gonna have your, your 3D prints here. So there's gonna be five different files. The first one is your front assembly. This is your top front assembly, your back assembly, your middle assembly, your middle assembly rectangle, which you'll see what this is important for, but that goes on that part of your middle assembly, and then this bottom assembly, which you're gonna need to print two of per each assembly. So you're gonna print out two of these. I just included one file. I don't know if it was the left or right side one, but you're gonna mirror it so you have two per each assembly. So they're gonna connect on the bottom there. So the uh, the assembly we're gonna put together today is one of these middle ones. These are gonna be your most common if you have a longer train, but I'm gonna show you which holes I tap. So remember this is a number 440 and US size uh, thread count here. So you're gonna tap this hole, this hole, this hole, and then those three as well on the other side. So uh, I'll just do that right now. And uh, the reason I do this, as mentioned, is to get the screws to go in straight and uh, to make sure the plastic doesn't split. This is a lot more forgiving than just shoving 
a screw in there because especially if it goes through the layers it could split it really easily so these uh, horizontal ones here I can't get my tap to go in the whole way so just get as far as you can so the last tool we got on this side is this one okay we got that side done we'll go to the next side let's see we will do this one and last one my tap I can't get all the way to this one but it's no big deal I made this holder this hole just a little bit bigger than this one so hopefully your screws won't split that part we got the whole thing tapped now we'll just clean it up a little bit with this utility knife this is I guess it's not mandatory but it makes it sit on the car a little bit better sometimes just smoothing out you can see it cuts a little bit off there And then sometimes on the tops here, I just kind of make sure that that post is clean because the bearings are going to sit on those. And everything looks pretty good. I already pulled out the support material on there, so that piece is good to go. We'll now go over these two bottom pieces. Remember, this is one file you're just going to mirror in your slicer program. First, you got to pull out the support material one piece and there's the other nice the only hole you need to tap is this you don't need to go too far with this one I usually go to there you can do that to the other one too but you don't need to see that and there you have it so for these this print that I'm going to show you guys in assemble today those are the things you're going to need to get ready all right, let's get on to assembling this wheel assembly now. And remember, this is just the middle assembly, um, but it's pretty typical for your back assemblies and middle assemblies. Mounting is just slightly different, but putting them all together is the same. So first we're gonna put on our road wheels. These are the wheels on the top here. So you're gonna take your uh, three quarter inch, yes, three quarter inch screw um, if you're using metric, it would be the 18 millimeter screw. And since I've tapped it, I can just pretty much hand put, put that in by my hand. We'll get that flush to right here. And then next we're going to take our bearings here. You're going to want to make sure that your bead here is very snug in the bearing. If it's clogged up or something might be running and spinning around the outside of the bead, which doesn't really help. It kind of defeats the purpose of having a bearing. So make sure it's snug so that if I spin it, the bearing itself is turning. If it's not snug, you can add some tape to the bead. I've done it plenty of times. Um, and then fit it in again until it's really snug. You're gonna slide that in there, make sure it's centered, and then just tightening it up. Give it a nice spin. That is a good bearing. So let's do that for the other side. Make sure it doesn't split the plastic here too. Um, I've had good success recently and they haven't really split the plastic, but sometimes they do. You could glue it back together, but uh, it is kind of a bummer. So that spins pretty good too. So that's good for the top part. Let's go to the bottom ones here. We're going to use our half inch or two 12, mil 12 millimeter screws for the bottom ones. So that's a little out of focus, but uh, make sure the head of your screw here can't go through the bearing because we're just going to have one screw on the side here like that. So this is what we're doing. We're doing this bottom part. So these screws right here, these ones the head was a little bit smaller so I put a little washer there. I think it's like three, three millimeter washers or or something like that. So we're gonna wanna make sure that the bearings don't slide off easily. So we will put that in there like that. Now get it, get it snug, but not too tight. So as you strip the plastic, but You'll know. And uh, these are 
may be your least important bearing, so if some of them don't run as well, you could always put those on the bottom, unless you're doing like an inverted flying whatever coaster. But uh, if I ever switch out bearings, I generally put them on the bottom if they're not as good. Okay, doing the second side. Uh, next step is we're gonna put these two together. The holes for these bottom ones here, they should be big enough where you can just slide this screw through. That is the one inch or 25 millimeter length screw there. You see there's a little groove cut out on the top of this pillar and this one, and that is the that is the diameter of the screw there. So that goes right in the center there. And we will screw that screw into there because we have tapped this one here. And it should go in straight. Still wiggling a little bit. Let's get it so it doesn't wiggle. Oh, nice, that's about right there. So that's pretty tight. Notice this screw, the inch, peeks out just a little bit from the plastic there. It's going to be either flush or peek out if you do it right, at least with these screws. So put in this second screw just a little ways and then add add the nut on there like that. Put in this screw it is also an inch till it sticks out the same distance as the other one. That way we know both of these two pieces are parallel. I'll show you I'll show you it going a little too far. You can see these two pieces are not parallel and that sticks out more than that one. So let's make this screw stick out the same. That sticks the same. And bearing. Okay, bring up that one. Get the other one. Just sticking out just the same distance as that other one. Now, these have a little bit of wiggle, just like that. Make sure everything is flush or the same distance out, and then we will take our pliers right here and just screw the nut down just a little bit. Not too tight, but tight enough. That does not have as much wiggle as this one. I always like making sure that just for aesthetic. See how that flat part is flat with the bottom there, parallel? I always do the same, just for fun. So this wheel assembly is complete. We're now ready to put it on our train, and I already took apart the wheels from this train here, so now you're going to realize why this has a rectangle in it and the back ones don't, but uh, that fits around that guy right there. And then this is where the middle assembly rectangle comes into play. Let's put this piece in there. And if you want, you could even glue these pieces in. I only printed the two pieces because it's hard to print support material under that. So if you'd want, you could glue that in there. Don't have to worry about it later. You're going to put your connects piece there first. And then that piece should fit down right on top of that, hopefully clamp that in place. So, and then we're just going to put in, these are just your typical connect screws here. So you're just going to screw it back on. Make sure it's nice and tight and that is pretty good. So that is it for a middle assembly. Um, back's even simpler because you don't have the second piece. You just screw it right down onto there. And then the front one, um, all you got to do is pull off that screw and then put the middle assembly on there. It should fit right down in there if everything prints out right for you. So I will just connect those two pieces and there you have 
um, just a two car train right there. Also be sure to check out the video on how I clean these ball bearings. They don't come quite this uh, low friction yet, but feel free to, or be sure to check that video out. And then the video on the comparison between these two, just running on a simple U-Track, just to show you the speed loss differences between this and a typical uh, connects wheel assembly setup with the plastic wheels. So thanks guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and hope they work well for you.